In this video, we're going to take a look at how to write a bubble sort and use one implementing a 2D array. Hmm. Now, in a previous video, we have covered a 1D bubble sort. We can do that without a problem. But what happens if we have a 2D array? Can we implement a bubble sort with a 2D array? Is that even possible? Can we do that? Yes, we can. But how does that work? Because in a 1D array, you only have one column to work with. In a 2D array, you have two columns of data. So how does the computer know what to sort? Well, we tell it what to sort. So imagine we have the following data. We have student ID, which is going to be column one, student score, which is column two. So we're going to sort based on the student score. Now we have our two columns, and because we are sorting on student score, we know we need the second column of each row. So my rows go horizontal, my columns go vertical. So I know I need to flip these, but also at the same time, the student ID. But I'm uh, sorting these based on student score. So 95 is greater than 65, so I must switch these rows. Now, when you're writing a 2D array bubble sort, sometimes it helps to ask yourself some questions in talking out loud. So we ask ourselves, is row 1, column 2, greater than row 2, column 2? So is row 1, column 2, 95, greater than 65? Now, in our code, we use an if statement. If row 1, column 2, is greater than row 2, uh, two column two, then we implement. And we see that 95 is indeed greater than 65. So we're going to go through and take a look at how a bubble sort actually works with the 2D array, and then we're going to code it. So we have two things to store, and we can do one at a time. So um, the first thing to do is store 123, the student ID, in a temp variable, and then take ID 124 and move it to the first row by overriding 123. So let's take a look at uh, what that looks like. Because remember, we need to flip 95 and 65, but also tie it to the student ID. So in our first iteration that we have here, we take 123, we move it to the temporary variable. Then what I do is I take 124, I overwrite the first row, and I put 124, I take my temp variable, and I put that into row plus one, which is 123. But you'll notice these scores do not match because 123 scored a 95. And that is what the second iteration is for. I take 95. I overwrite what was in the temp variable. So now I have 95. I'm going to move 65 back to row one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my temp variable, 95, and I'm going to place it. So now my table is updated. 124 and 65 are together. 123 and 95 are together. So now we start checking the next score. We ask ourselves, is 95 greater than 21? It is. So it's time to swap both the ID and the student score. So I move 123 to my temporary variable. I take 125 and overwrite it into where 123 was. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take 123 out of my temp. I'm going to move it into row plus one because remember, we're going to be running a loop here. Now that I have stored the IDs and I have swapped them, it is time to swap the 95 and the 21. So I need to take that 95. I need to put it inside my uh, temp variable. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 21. I'm going to overwrite column, um, or excuse me, row two, column two with 21. But I've stored 95. So now I can put that in row three, column two. So now we have 125 and 21 tied together. 123 and 95. So this is what it looks like now. Now we ask ourselves, we keep going with the bubble sort, is 95 greater than 18? It is, so it's time to swap both the ID and the student score, but we can only do one at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take 123, we're going to place it into our temporary variable. That way, because if we just take 126 and overwrite the 123, it's gone. So that is the purpose of the temp variable. So I move 126 where 123 was. Then I'm going to take 123 from my temp, and I'm going to place it where 126 was. So we've swapped the IDs. Now it's time to swap 
the scores. So I'm gonna take 95, place it in my temp variable. I'm gonna move 18 where 95 was. Then I'm gonna take 95 out of my temp variable, move it where 18 was, and now 126 and 18 are tied together. 123 and 95 are tied together. So we ask, is 95 greater than 11? It is, so it's time to swap both the ID and the student score. So we do what we did. 123, we store that in our temp variable. We take 127, we overwrite where uh, 123 was. I'm gonna take my temp variable, 123. I'm gonna place it where 127 is. Now that I've done that, it's time to swap these scores. 95 is gonna go in the temp variable. I'm gonna take this 11, I'm gonna overwrite it where the uh, 95 was. Then I'm gonna take 95 out of the temp variable and overwrite where the 11 originally was. And now we're fully updated. So for the 123 and 95, cause you may be saying it isn't sorted, that didn't work. Well, that was just for the first score. Now we gotta go back and run it all the way through starting with 124 and 65. And this is why bubble sorts are inefficient. We now go back and start from the beginning. We don't need to compare it to 95, so we don't go as far this time, so we would update our max index. Let's go ahead and code this out so we can see this in action. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and encode it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have five rows and two columns of student data. Both of those are going to be integers. I'm going to do temp as an integer because I'll be storing integer values into a temporary variable, once for the ID and then again for the test score. This program is going to keep running until there are no more swaps. So that's going to be a Boolean value. Then I'm going to do my max index. That's going to be an integer. And then I'm going to use n to keep track of where we are. For example, when we take the 123, the student ID 123.95, and we get it all the way to the end, we don't need to compare it again. We don't need to go as far as we did. So that is why we're going to be using n to uh, increment or decrement, in this case, the max index value. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hard code our student ID and test scores. That way we don't need to input it every time we run our program. So through the magic of fast forwarding the video, uh, we'll be able to have all that. So let's go ahead and take a look at that data. We have our data hard-coded here, and so in row one, column one, we have the ID. In row two, column one, we have the ID. Row three, column one, we have the ID, and so on. In row one, column two, we have uh, one, two, threes test score. In row two, column two, we have student ID, one, two, four, we have their test score, and so on. Our max index is five. We're gonna keep count of in, which is a max index uh, minus one, and that is so uh, we don't keep checking things that have already been uh, sorted. So what we need to do is we need to have a, a do loop until. We'll fix that loop until in a minute. We're gonna set no swaps equals uh, to true. Because when we exit that for loop, if there are no more swaps left to do, then we know our program is done and we need to uh, exit it. So what we're gonna do is we need to do the outer loop and the outer loop is for the rows. So we're gonna do for i equals one, two, n, and we can see n, we set the max index minus uh, to one. We don't need to keep checking everything. And we said we're doing it based on the scores. So if students, and that is gonna be i, two, we're checking the row, uh, each row and the score. So we're checking column two. We're seeing if it's greater than, and we got to check the next row, which is going to be I plus one, two. If that is true, then what we need to do is we need to do some switching. And remember, we said if we're going to do some switching, we need to store the ID. Then what we need to do is we need to... Um, well, after swapping the IDs, we also need to store the uh, test scores into a temporary variable. So that means this inner loop must run twice, once for the row, the column, and then for the second column. So what we're going to do is inside our temp variable, we're going to store I, J. What that means is we're going to store, when this runs the first time, we're going to store row 1, which is done by I, 
column one, which is done by J, because we're going to be swapping and we don't want to overwrite that variable. So then what we're going to do is with row one, column one, what are we going to put there? Well, the thing we're going to put there is the student in the next row. We're going to put it now when you're looking at it, you're saying, oh, well, what about J? Well, we have to put it in row. We're going to take row two. Row one, we're going to put that into or row two, column one, which is the student ID. We're going to put that into row one, column one. So that's what's going to happen here. Then what we're going to do is we can't forget about we can't forget about that temp variable. What we just put there. We're going to put our temp variable there. The second time this runs will be for the score. So then I'm looking at row one, column two, which is the score. I'm going to place that in the temp variable. Then in row one, column two, I'm going to put what was in the next row, column two. I'm going to put that in the uh, previous row, then I'm going to take my temp variable, I'm going to load that in the next row. So uh, just like that, we are almost done. That is the meat and potatoes of the um, bubble sort. Now you want to put this next part in the right spot. No swaps equals false. Because if we just swapped this, then we still have swaps to do. So when it loops back around, it'll say, okay, you know what? We need to do some more swaps, but we don't need to check uh, 95 when it gets all the way to the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to do n minus one. This is going to happen after both of these for loops get done. Now, if we just have loop here, it's going to loop forever. So we're going to loop until, and that's no swaps equals true and you want to spell swaps uh, correctly uh, not one not two p's but one so right here if this if statement never runs that means this inner for loop never runs we just jump down here to this next and we loop back up well if no swaps is equal true no swaps never gets changed to false so what we're going to do now is we're going to run our data and see if it works and it should work so I forgot something important before we run our data. Uh, I ran it and uh, nothing was outputting. So what we want to do is uh, we want to write some uh, code here. You can use a couple for loops. What I did was uh, just to save time, I wanted to make sure that it's all outputting correctly. So I want row one, column one, row one, column two, and I did it all the way down. So what we're going to do is we're going to run our code and make sure that it's all sorted. So here we have 127, they got a grade of 11. 126 got a grade of 18. 125 got a grade of 21. 124 got a grade of 65. 123 got a grade of 95. So it has run all the way. We sorted by the grade. The ID has nothing to do with the sorting mechanism. We must store the ID though and swap them around because if we just switch the grade, it's going to say 123 got an 11. Well, students would be very upset if that happened. Imagine getting uh, marks for a score you did not earn. So that is how a 2D array bubble sort works. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have a comment, please post one uh, down below. And we'll see you guys in the next video.